Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for attending today's Q&A Cafe. This is going to be part two uh, of our project plan and SAP by design project management series with your host, Chris Hogan. My name is Catherine and I will be facilitating today uh, as this recording as this webinar will be recorded we will keep everyone on mute and send out the recording in a few days please note that it will also be posted on our youtube channel and in our resource hub if you subscribe to our youtube channel you'll get all the notifications of when our q a cafes will be posted before I hand it over to Chris, just uh, please don't forget to join us next week. That's Wednesday, October the 20th. That's going to be on our Q&A Cafe on AR collections and document delivery for Resolve in SAP Business One. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Chris. Thanks, Catherine. And just before I jump into it, I just want to confirm that you can see the screen. Everything looks good. Everything looks great. Okay, perfect. Right, so uh, Catherine had uh, introduced us. We're going to go through part two of the project management uh, project plan uh, coverage. And uh, why that's part two is in, in the last video, what you would have seen is we were specifically focused on the Gantt chart area of the project. So we're going to today just do a little bit of a recap of that and then go into a couple of the elements that we didn't uh, complete. And then th the two parts together will finish out really the Gantt chart functionality of the project in terms of planning your project. So we're logged into By Design here, and what we're going to go is to the Project Management Work Center and pull up the projects view. And we'll go and pull up that same project that we had used last time. So that was CPSO 121. So we'll search for that here. And so if you look at the previous videos, this project should look familiar. So we're going to drill into this project and click view all to bring us into the full details view of it. And so this would be the project from uh, from what you remember from the last video. I'm just going to expand the vertical bar here so we can get a better view of, uh, of the screen. So like I was saying, the last session where we were focused on and where we are going to also be focused on in this session just to round out um, the coverage of the project plan is we were focused specifically a project plan tab here and in the Gantt chart area. So I'm going to do a little bit of a recap just in terms of what we covered in terms of building out your tasks and setting up the durations and timelines. And where I'm going to go next then in uh, this session is into some of the other areas that we didn't uh, finish out. So we'll go and take a look at the work breakdown structure view of the project tasks and also the network diagram. And then in terms of the project details, in the last session, we covered a lot of the uh, tabs on the detail view of tasks. Uh, so the ones that we did cover is we covered off the basic data, we covered off work, we covered off scheduling, checklists, accounting attachments. So in this session, what we'll finish with is taking a look at how the material expenses and revenue tabs come into play, specifically from the perspective of, of planning the project before we get it all kicked off and, and execute the project. Okay, so with that, we kind of set the context. I just wanted to go and do a quick recap in terms of the Gantt chart functionality. Um, so we kind of have the right context before we jump into the work breakdown structure and network diagram. So really the kind of first things first that we had gone through was how to build out the list of tasks. So essentially what you're going to be doing. And so with that, the key functionality that uh, we went over was essentially how to add, delete, move tasks up and down, uh, and indent them, copy them. So for example, if we wanted to go and add some new tasks, uh, the button over here would allow us to ask to add tasks, phases, milestones. If you want to know what the difference is on those, we covered that in the last video, but for, for right now, just want to do a quick recap in terms of adding tasks. So using that button is how we can easily add tasks. When it comes to doing uh, deletion of tasks, uh, it's quite simple as well. It's just a matter of selecting the task that you want to uh, get rid of and delete it, and you'll get a confirmation dialog popping up and you can delete the task. In terms of moving the task up and down in terms of the, uh, the hierarchy within the work breakdown structure, I think what I'll do here is I'll actually just add a couple more and get a better picture of that. So for example, if we were wanting to make uh, these two tasks here, 14 and 15, to be subtasks of 13, it's really simple and and all we need to do is select that task and use these buttons up here to indent. Uh, or if we had made a mistake, we need to correct that. We can easily also outdent that task. So 
playing with these buttons here, you'll get used to uh, how to move those tasks and arrange them as you need. Uh, the kind of the last thing in terms of creating it, the, the list of tasks that you need in terms of the what that's going to be performed, the last one was the copy function, which is quite handy and is really only available on this Gantt chart view. So if you've gone through the work of defining a, a set of tasks and there's going to be a similar structure of tasks repeating throughout a project, but maybe just in different timelines or durations uh, or different people involved, uh, you can get the basis of, of that structure created. Uh, again, with all the durations and, and, and dates and all that kind of stuff. And once you've got that set, you can easily create a copy of that here by selecting essentially the section of tasks that you want to copy. Uh, and you can select copy. And then you just need to tell it where you want to paste it in. So the key here is we want to paste this in under the project. So we would select the project and paste it under the parent that we have selected. And that would give us a new section of tasks uh, down below, which would be identical to what we have copied. So in terms of creating you know, the list of tasks of what we're going to uh, have in our uh, project uh, task list, uh, that's essentially the main uh, you know, functionality for adding, edit, deleting. But the, after you've got that list of tasks created, really your next step then is to define uh, how long these tasks are going to take. And once that's defined, you know, and, and dates, and once that's defined, then you would start putting in uh, the people that will be working on it. And all that is is what we covered in, in the last video. Um, so that can easily be done here by selecting uh, these tasks uh, and entering in, for example, the duration uh, on here. So we could make these tasks both to be five days. So I won't go through any more of that. Like I said, I was covering the other video. Uh, but one thing that I will just uh, recap as well is there's also some handy functionality on the Gantt side of uh, this view that you can do uh, similar updates and edits to these tasks. So for example, if we wanted to make uh, this uh, task here be not a duration of one day, but it's going to be five, 10 days, we can uh, use the um, kind of like the dragging functionality on these tasks. So you'll notice that as I move my cursor over these tasks, some of them will change my cursor to either a crosshair there, for example, or here it's like a little um, two arrows that uh, look like I can stretch it. Whereas this one here, there's nothing really uh, that makes the cursor change. And so what we're seeing here is when you get those arrows left, right, uh, that's indicating that if I were to click down on my left uh, mouse button and then start dragging it out, you can see that it's extending the dates. And really what it's doing here is where I end up dropping the task is going to extend the duration out to be uh, the duration between those, those two dates of the task, the start date and end date. Uh, so similarly, we could do the same thing here and drag that one out to also be five days, similar to those tasks. The reason that we didn't see my cursor change here on this task here is really that this task represents a summary task of the two subtasks below it. So it's really that this, uh, once the project is you know, rescheduled, uh, we would see this update to reflect the overall duration of these two project tasks. Uh, so for example, after we've made these updates, we can go and click the schedule button, then we'll see those two summary tasks be updated accordingly. So that was one kind of thing in terms of setting up the duration. The other thing that we had kind of seen in the last video also is if you wanted to um, change this, if you wanted to put constraints on these tasks in terms of when they should start uh, on specific dates, uh, or if you wanted to create dependencies, you can also do those two things through the Gantt uh, uh, graphical view here. The dependencies, the way that you do that would be, for example, uh, once you've got the crosshair, uh, changed uh, your icon to a crosshair. If you click down in the middle of the, that task and then you start to slowly drag, you'll see an arrow that gets formed. And then it's just a matter of going and dragging and dropping it onto the task that you want to uh, be the next dependent. And you'll see that once we schedule, then it'll push out that, that task. Uh, if you want to change the type of dependency, if you click on that arrow, you can change the type of dependency easily from this pop-up window. And really the dependency functionality that you're seeing here is all the same functionality we saw in the last video uh, that you would be able to do, uh, sorry, manually uh, adding dependencies uh, here uh, by just adding and removing rows that are either successor or uh, predecessor uh, uh, dependencies. 
So the last thing was just the constraint dates. So over on the scheduling, if you want to set specific constraints, uh, the way that you can do that is with the crosshair, and you can drag the task to be specifically starting at a certain date. And you'll see a little uh, arrow show up just at the beginning of the task there. And as we go and we refresh the task, you'll see now that it's got a constraint date that's put on it. And then you can further refine the type of constraint in this uh, task details down below. So that's a really quick recap of the uh, listing out the tasks, durations, setting the schedule durations, dependencies uh, using this Gantt chart view. What I want to next go into is show you the other two tabs, the work breakdown structure and the network diagram, and just briefly explain uh, what, you know, what they show and what they offer, which may be useful to you. So on the work breakdown structure uh, view or sub view of the project plan, you'll see all the same tasks, uh, but really the representation here is now more of a hierarchical display of those tasks. Uh, you also do have the ability to add additional tasks, uh, either phases, task milestones, uh, and that can easily be done using uh, drag and drop. So for example, if we wanted to further flesh out uh, under some of these tasks that we've been adding, we can go ahead and, and just drag and you'll see that the mouse cursor changes to a plus. And so now wherever I drop it, now that new task will be added as a subtask of where I dropped it. You have the same ability to move tasks up and around throughout the hierarchy in the same way on the Gantt chart that you were able to move them up and down and indent them. Uh, and the, the way really to do that is select the task that you've wanting to move. And then you can use the uh, up and down and left and right arrows to move them around within the hierarchy. So for example, there I was moving up that subtask to now be at the same level as these other tasks. Uh, if I wanted to move it back down, I would just use the down arrow. If you wanted to rearrange them left to right, then you've got the left to right buttons. Any of the tasks that you have selected uh, in here, you have the same ability to go and edit all of that same basic data work, uh, planned work, planned materials that we would have seen in all the other uh, explanations in the last video. Um, the main reason really for this view here is more, like I said, of a hierarchical view of the project. One thing that's a little bit limiting of this view is just the screen real estate that they offer uh, to, to that hierarchical view. So you will need to perhaps, you know, navigate out or navigate into where you want to work specifically, or, you know, maybe like in a project team review meeting, uh, this would be better suited on, for example, like a projector screen. But in any case, it does offer another view, uh, specifically the hierarchical view of the work breakdown structure that you would see similarly uh, in here in the Gantt view. With that, uh, I was gonna next go to the network diagram view. So the network diagram sub view shows you similar, uh, so it shows you the same tasks that you would see in the Gantt chart. And really the main difference though for the the, um, the main difference that is intended for the network diagram is it's showing you the sequence of tasks and further to the sequence, really illustrating where the critical path of tasks is in the project. Uh, this view does not have this, so it does have the same ability in terms of going and adding in a new project, uh, sorry, new tasks. It doesn't have the same type of functionality uh, in terms of uh, adding dependencies and changing those dependencies. That's really done over on the Gantt chart if you want that drag and drop functionality. Uh, it, but it does have, if you happen to be looking at the network diagram here, need to adjust, need to tweak something, it does have the same view uh, into all of the same task detail uh, subtabs uh, that, you can, that you can refine. So similarly here, uh, the screen real estate that's offered for this view can be a little bit limiting. So you may need to zoom out, zoom in, um, or, you know, viewing, like I said, like in a projector that might be better suited or in a large monitor. Um, if you have, if you, you know, if your project structure is quite expensive, uh, there is this navigate panel. So if you are zoomed in, uh, you know, quite, quite detailed, uh, zoomed into the project, you're wanting to know where you are. This gives you a bit of a frame of reference for the overall view of the project. So again, uh, really the, the area that you're going to do the most of your work is going to be in the Gantt chart. 
but the work breakdown structure of the network diagram do offer useful views if you need to see the project more in a hierarchical view and also if you need to uh, see better illustrated the specific sequence of tasks and illustrated within that sequence the critical path of the project. So those are the two topics that I wanted to round out just in terms of the different views of the task structure. There's three other areas that we didn't cover in the last video, specifically under project planning, uh, that we're going to now go into next. Uh, and that should round out essentially most of the functionality in the project plan tab of the project. So the next area we're going to go to is the materials. Uh, so over on the materials tab, so for example, if this were to be a, an example of like a software uh, project that we were developing, we need to go install it on some hardware. Uh, for example, on the deployment task, at the beginning of the project, we might know in advance that there's certain materials, certain hardware components that we need to plan, either that we're going to be uh, purchased from an external supplier, or if we're a type of company that, you know, sells these uh, projects, we also have some of those hardware components in stock ourselves, we would be planning to use those from our own stock. And so the materials tab of a task is exactly where you can go and put in planned material for your project. In the same way that on tasks, we were setting up the work and planning out the specific types of work, the services, and the amount of effort, the hours that people were going to be doing for the project. In the same way that we plan the work, we can plan materials. And so how that's done is easily uh, just by adding a row and you'll get a, uh, a material selection list here. And so you can open up this material selection list and you can search for any of the products that you would either have in stock yourselves or that you would procure. And so for example, like I said, if we were looking at some computer components that might need to be uh, part of this installation. So we can go and we can add that we are going to need uh, that type of material component. The next field here indicates how you are planning to uh, procure that material for this project. So if we select the from stock, uh, what that indicates is you're planning that for this project, you're going to be using these uh, materials from your own inventories. If you leave it unchecked, what that's telling the system is that you're planning to procure that from an external supplier. We won't go through the actual uh, ordering of those products in this video. That'll be in a future video where we go through and cover the, uh, the products uh, procurement. Uh, but just in terms of drawing a line to what that relates to, over here when you've got it that you're planning to procure that from your own stock is where you'll end up then creating project stock orders to allocate those to your project and once allocated you can subsequently consume them from those allocations. Different than if you had uh, left it unchecked on the uh, previous tab, so if we had left the materials unchecked indicating that it was going to be procured, then what that indicates for the system is that really for these we would be planning to procure them through purchase request and purchase order with the uh, supplier then shipping those to us through a goods receipt, that's how we would end up consuming them into the project. So again, we won't go through that in detail, but just drawing a line to uh, what that ties to. What's here is really representing uh, just the planning that we're planning that we're going to be needing these types of components. Uh, if there was a product specification, you could indicate that there relevant to that particular product. Uh, dates in terms of uh, when the product would be needed and then the quantity for how many would be needed. And lastly, indicating whether or not this is going to be a product that is going to be uh, billable to the customer or non-billable. So that's all that we're going to cover in terms of the material planning. Uh, the next area that we're going to go to is the expenses. So when you've got a project and the project involves services or materials, uh, behind the scenes, uh, when the project is updated and saved, it's already calculating using some, some standard rates. So I'll just go and select here. For example, we had somebody. So we've got standard rates that can be tied to this type of service. 
uh, engineered. There's a couple other options in terms of how you can tie costing rates to uh, your employees. Uh, and then there's also rates that are associated with external providers, uh, suppliers to your project. So when it comes to labor, uh, those costs are in the background. Uh, planned costs are calculated using the, that data in the background. Uh, in the same way for materials, uh, any materials that's defined, uh, those materials, the planned materials, uh, that planned cost will be reflected uh, using uh, those material costs. However, there's uh, other expenses that could hit your project in terms of expense reports or other supplier invoices that might not be related to materials. And so the expenses tab is where, from a planning perspective, you can add those planned expenses to your project. And how you do that is that you use the add row and you'll go and you'll select uh, expense group. And so these expense groups uh, align with the expense groups for uh, expense reports and supplier uh, invoices. So for example, we could say that in the uh, deployment task that we're on, we might expect that there's some transportation related expenses that are gonna be coming in and they might be in the area of $1,000. So you can add as many as you want in terms of the expense, um, expense types. Uh, if you leave the date range open, when this comes to reporting, the way the system interprets that is that it essentially takes your $1,000 and spreads it over the duration of the whole project. Uh, if you instead wanted to refine it to be in specific periods, you'd either do that as uh, you know, multiple line items with specific dates, and then it'll spread it just over those two dates. Um, alternatively, there's another option with period plans where you can get really fine grained, um, but that's where the date functionality would be used. One really key thing to understand in terms of uh, you know, this expenses tab is, remember this is planned expenses. So this is all really from a planning perspective. And so where it comes into play is when we're looking at reports, when we're running reports, we want to compare the actual expense reports or the actual supplier expenses against the planned values that we had at the outset. That's where this is really coming in. There's nothing that this is going to be putting into the system in terms of transactions. These rows that we see here are all really from a planned perspective. So just for the moment, I'm going to save these changes. And then I'm going to switch over to uh, the revenues. Uh, planning. And that'll be the last kind of element really that we're going to cover um, before we finish out the demonstration. So like we had gone through on the expenses, there is also the option to plan the expected revenues. And you can do that at any level of, of the project, either the project header, uh, summary tasks, or specific tasks. And the way that you do that is very similar to how we saw on expenses. Uh, it's a matter of adding rows. And the options that you'll be provided here are the income groups that are defined in the system. Uh, so for example, it might be that on the specific deployment activity that we expect that the revenues that were gonna be earned from this project are in the area of $5,000. Uh, just like had just dust on the uh, expenses, the date range here, if we leave that blank, uh, the reporting will spread that out over the duration of the project, or we can refine that using specific start and dates um, or uh, multiple rows. And you can have as many rows as you want here with different expense group types. So with the expenses and revenues, one last thing that I wanted to demonstrate to you is uh, once you've built this out, the, the planned expenses, planned revenues, uh, there may be a need, you know, after the project's been running, that you may need to come and uh, update some of the plan values, maybe they're incorrect, whatever the reason is. Uh, you can certainly come here and do those updates, but if you've got a lot of rows uh, in these two tabs and there's a lot of updates that you need to make, maybe because you've broken them out you know, with uh, multiple rows by separate date ranges, there is another alternative uh, which may be ben more beneficial for you in terms of making those kinds of updates uh, across both these tabs with multiple rows and values. And so uh, what that is, is that you can also use Microsoft Excel to essentially download these planned expenses and planned revenues, and then upload those updates back into the system. And so where you would find that is, I'm just gonna close the project out. 
Uh, I'll close the project out. Looks like we just maybe lost a connection there. Just give me a second to refresh the browser. I'll close that out. Let me just go back and confirm that the project still does have those changes before I go over to the uh, Excel updater. So again, I'm just gonna go to the projects and it was CPSO 121. And here I'm just going to look to confirm that we had those recent changes on the expenses and revenues saved. Okay, so we still have the expenses of $1,000 on deployment and the revenues, we still have 5,000, perfect, okay. So where I was gonna take you is uh, cost and revenue work center. So under the cost and revenue work center under projects, uh, so there's, uh, this is a specific view for cost and revenue analysis and updating on projects. Uh, but there's one specific function in here, which is that Excel updater that I want to demonstrate to you. So if we search, for example, for CPSO 121, uh, so this, this is our project. Here's where you can take this and you can export the expense and revenue data that we were just looking at, that we were just updating. You can exp uh, export that to Excel. So if you click that, it'll download to Microsoft Excel. You'll see that. And then when you open that up, what you'll be presented with essentially, and I've already done it, um, what you'll be presented with is essentially this Excel tool. Now you'll wanna make sure that you've got the Excel Business by Design add-in downloaded and installed. You can access that from your, uh, your My Launchpad, uh, self-services, downloading additional software. Uh, if you're not clear on how to do that, feel free to reach out to VistaV support. We can help you with that. Once you've got that all installed, then uh, when you download this file and you open it up, you're gonna have two tabs on here. One is the query tab, and one is going to be essentially the results that have been fetched based on your query. So here we want to go and we want to fetch uh, specifically one project. And so I've entered in the project there and then over, so I'm on the home tab of Excel and then way over on the right, you'll see a couple buttons by design project related. And so if we click on the query button, uh, what you'll see is uh, a pop-up come up. There's a bunch of activity that kind of occurred based on the query parameters that I put in. And then you'll get a message back that it either completed successfully or maybe there were some errors. And if so, you can drill into to, to why. But here, what uh, I did is I queried specifically for this project. And so the query results were brought back on the project and expense uh, revenue tab. If I go and I expand this out, you'll see uh, exactly the, the project details that we were essentially working with, right? So we've got the project header, we've got multiple tasks, and in the you know, a couple of the tasks that we were working on, so the deployment specifically, is where we had manually entered in an expense, a planned expense and planned revenue. And so here's the values that we had entered in. So this is a really good uh, tool, useful, again, uh, more if you've got a lot of, ex if you've gone, right, you've gone to the to the, uh, to the work of planning out your planned expenses and revenues in quite a bit of detail and you've got lots of rows, it may be easier, right, you'll have a lot of rows here downloaded that you can then come and easily just make updates. So, for example, we might need to change the planned expenses to 1500 and need the planned revenue to 5500 whatever the case is that you need to make updates. Once you've made those updates, then it's just a matter of uh, clicking the update button to save them back. Now, one thing just to be aware of is if we're making those updates back, you will wanna make sure that you're not actually uh, already kind of like within the project making updates. So we don't have a lock on the project itself. So we can see here, there's I'm, I'm not in that project. So I'll bring an Excel back. And so we should be clear then to go and click update. And so you'll see the same kind of uh, processing uh, dialogue. It'll come back either that it completed successfully with those updates, uh, or if there was errors, uh, you'd be able to click on the view errors button and it would illustrate or provide indication as to where there had problems. But if everything worked out fine, then what you should expect is when you next pull the project back up, you'll see those updated values within the project. So if we were to go back, for example, under the project here and pull up CPSO 121, 
on that deployment task is where we'd be expecting to see those updated revenue, planned revenues and planned expenses. So there we see it's been updated to 1500 and the revenues to 5500. So you don't have to use the Excel tool, but again, it's just more when you come into a lot of updates, that might be a lot easier than, right, scroll, scroll, scroll through the rows in here um, and, and making adjustments on screen. So that ends today's demonstration. It's a shorter one than the last one, and really the intent of this today's demonstration, uh, like I mentioned at the outset, was really to round out the demonstration of the functionality that's provided within the project plan tab of the project, which is where you spend the bulk of your time at the very beginning of the project in terms of setting it up. Um, so the very first video went at length through covering how to build out the list of tasks, uh, indent them, add, delete, it also went through covering uh, all the functionality under the basic data, uh, planning out your uh, types of services that you're going to be providing and in what quantity of hours. It went through the scheduling of dates and duration and all the checklists, uh, dependencies and attachments functionality. This video is where we finished it. We rounded it out going through and explaining materials and expenses. So with that, we've covered essentially all the functionality on the task details to be aware of in planning your project. And then we also took a look at the work breakdown structure view and the network diagram view, which provide you just alternate views of the Gantt chart uh, view. The work breakdown, again, just a quick recap, is really meant to be a hierarchical view of the project. And the network diagram, more of a sequential view of the tasks and specifically highlighting the critical path of the, the project. So with that, Catherine, that concludes uh, today's demo, and I'll turn it back over to you if there's any questions. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Chris. As per usual, another awesome webinar. Um, I don't see any questions here, um, but as Chris mentioned, please feel free to reach out to uh, the support team at this view if you do have any questions pertaining to this or to anything else, and we are always happy to help. Um, so with that, I'm going to wrap up here. Another huge thanks to Chris for another fantastic webinar. Don't forget to join us uh, next week. That's Wednesday, October the 20th. Again, that is AR Collections and Document Delivery for Resolve in SAP Business One. Um, we also want to just do a quick plug. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can find all of our recordings of the Q&A cafes there and also on our resources hub.